Since its operational launch in November 2019, SpaceX's Starlink has already created quite a scene, with more than 30 successful missions, over 1,600 active satellites, and a $99 price tag. CEO Elon Musk's newest major project is one to behold, with hopes to provide high-speed satellite internet across the globe. Although it has only existed for a few years, SpaceX is already looking into launching a second-generation Starlink network, split into version 1.5 and 2.0. Nonetheless, there's been quite a bit of confirmed upgrades and changes coming soon to Starlink. However, Starlink's future upgrades aren't nearly as dramatic of an upgrade without understanding where the project has been. So let's take a look at Starlink's short history before discussing Starlink version 2.0 and its new benefits and improvements. Luckily, Starlink's history dates back to just January 2015. Even still, we'll start on February 22, 2018, with the launch of Tintin version 0.1. Version 0.1 was the basis of Starlink, having been the first launch for the upcoming satellite constellation. With two satellites on board, Microsat 2A and 2B, Starlink version 0.1 was taken to space aboard a Falcon 9 rocket alongside Spain's Paz spy satellite. While that was a random country-first satellite to piggyback off, the final positioning for version 0.1 wasn't. Originally planned to rise toward 1,125 kilometers, Tintin sat around its original orbit at 500 kilometers. Now orbiting in a low Earth orbit, version 0.1 served as a short experiment for Starlink, offering sub-10-minute communications in three ground stations across Washington State and California. But of course, speeds were abysmal, likely resting at just a few kilobits or megabits per second. Nonetheless, Starlink version 0.1 more than served its purpose, as it worked, making Starlink an immediate success. With tests having succeeded, Musk and the SpaceX team went to work on Starlink version 0.9. Tintin, expected to last for about 6 to 12 months before its intentional destruction, lined up nicely with version 0.9's launch. With the information from their version 0.1 tests, SpaceX went ahead with launching their first formal Starlink beta in May 2019. Now, with 60 satellites and a few upgrades, version 0.9 launched in mid-May. A bit different from the first two Microsat satellites, this collection had some unique updates and design changes. The most notable would be Starlink's new satellite design, home to flat panels, multiple antennas, and a solar array. These flat panels were essential for launch, as they allowed SpaceX to stack dozens of satellites in a single stack. Anyway, weighing in at 227 kilograms, the first launch of official Starlink satellites went surprisingly well. Again, compared to the Tintin satellites, these were production designs, built to be quite similar to planned future builds. But of course, as we haven't even hit version 1.0, these satellites were still in test form. Even still, SpaceX successfully pushed another set of satellites into near-Earth orbit from a Falcon 9, releasing them to orbit for a few years. Eventually, i.e. August 24, 2021, all the satellites deorbited, although most version 0.9 satellites operated for about two years. Nonetheless, version 0.9 satellites came equipped with Hall Effect thrusters, built to operate from Krypton to push satellites into minor position adjustments, altitude changes, and eventually full deorbit. Also featuring star trackers, designed for precise positioning from distant stars, DOD-powered autonomous collision avoidance, and fast-burning materials, version 0.9 was almost up to public standards. Settling at 550 kilometers, version 0.9 ended up resting 10% higher than the Tintin satellites. In total, the 60 satellites held roughly 200 to 300 gigabits per second in bandwidth, or about 3 to 4 gigabits in bandwidth per satellite. After version 0.9 successfully launched, SpaceX went on a deployment spree, launching 28 unique Starlink missions as part of version 1, the first official release. With most of these launches holding the maximum of 60 satellites stacked against each other, SpaceX launched over two dozen times between November 11, 2020 and May 26, 2021. Totaling 1,678 satellites, version 1.0 was not a minor feat. Luckily, though, every launch went to plan, leaving Starlink fully operational with newly designed satellites and brand new upgrades. Now entirely disintegrating within the Earth's atmosphere, SpaceX built version 1.0 to leave no prints behind when the satellites became outdated. Nonetheless, the company packed on a few massive changes, with the most notable being the addition of KA band. Short for K above, this frequency spectrum was a necessity for Starlink's first operational launch. 
The band, used for high-throughput satellite internet, also partially overlaps with frequencies used by 5G and other major service options. However, that made Starlink much more accessible for devices to use and access through the help of a Starlink satellite dish. These dishes went out to specific beta testers in late 2020, around August, with a $499 price tag and a $99 monthly fee. Beta testers could receive satellite internet with download and upload speeds of about 5 to 60 megabits per second through the dishes. By October 2020, SpaceX pinned future speeds at upwards of 50 to 150 megabits per second. At the time, only Americans could connect to these 260-kilogram satellites, with eventual service spreading to Canada, parts of Europe, Oceania, and South America. While that was incredible, it's nothing compared to version 2.0. One of the most significant talking points behind version 2.0 is inter-satellite communication. Starlink has been relatively limited, ignoring that it has been early access with only some 1,700-odd satellites launched. By January 24, 2021, the first laser-containing Starlink satellites launched, with a total of 10. These were and remain the only Starlink satellites with inter-satellite communication powered by lasers. See, Starlink has been at a significant disadvantage compared to cable internet providers for its short lifetime. While fiber optics and other cable-powered means can take the internet to the customer, satellite internet can only follow through where the satellites are. Companies like Comcast or AT&T can send a van to your home and add some additional cabling, although satellite companies can't just add service. Starlink can send data to your home through a dish, although it has multiple steps that severely slow it down. For example, Starlink satellites have to pass traffic through ground stations called gateways. These stations exchange signals with Starlink, connecting the service to existing cabling, as the satellites can't reach everywhere. However, the launch of these 10 satellites and the future launch of version 2.0 will change things. Suddenly, Starlink satellites won't have to connect to ground stations to receive and transmit data. Instead, all they'll have to do is connect to another satellite and send the data anywhere they want. By including lasers and inter-satellite communication, data can roam nearly anywhere worldwide, as long as there's a Starlink satellite close enough. Plus, with thousands expected to reach orbit, that won't be too hard. Additionally, laser links take only a few seconds or minutes to lock on between satellites and transmit data at theoretical dozens, if not hundreds of gigabits per second. Even if version 2.0 includes just laser links as its only upgrade, it'll bring so many benefits and put it much closer to being a cable alternative. Unfortunately, SpaceX has been incredibly quiet about version 2.0, although Elon Musk has said it'll be significantly more capable with launches in 2022. Starlink version 2.0 is expected by many to bring E-band frequencies at about 60 to 90 gigahertz upwards of 30,000 additional satellites and global coverage through laser links. Realistically, the only limit to Starlink is in its bandwidth, as the satellites are so low in Earth's orbit. With Starlink's potential speed increasing, latency decreasing, bandwidth growing, and coverage speeding up exponentially, there's a lot of underrated but significant benefits coming with version 2.0. Laser links and inter-satellite communication, while boring to many, is essential in ensuring Starlink can work as intended. After all, you're looking at lasers that can connect between satellites within minutes and transfer data in the potentially dozens of gigabits per second. So across thousands of satellites, you're looking at terabytes or petabytes of additional bandwidth. Of course, laser links aren't the only add-on, though. SpaceX has tried using lower albedo materials on the exterior of satellites for a while using darker colors to prevent reflections and light pollution. However, with higher temperatures and poor conditions, the company hasn't tried much more. With Starlink version 2.0, though, there's a chance that SpaceX will be able to launch satellites with much less interference and reflectivity. Similar to earlier versions, version 2.0 satellites will sit at 570 kilometers, with the ability to completely deorbit and disintegrate within the Earth's atmosphere. Plus, with the much more extensive coverage range, SpaceX will be able to apply for increased funding and licensing across countries and continents, which could make future updates and system-wide changes much more straightforward. And with quite a few revisions in the works, that is a significant benefit for Starlink's future. With initial launches expected as soon as September 2021, we could see the first higher-inclination Starlink version 2.0 satellites within just a few weeks. With that in mind, what do you all think? We know almost certainly with SpaceX's 100% Starlink success rate that version 2.0 will physically deliver. Although will it bring what Elon Musk has had in mind? Laser links are handy additions, 
although they could potentially serve as a flop. In addition, version 2.0 could run into some trouble with the FCC, especially considering current limitations in how many satellites SpaceX is licensed to launch. Either way, what do you all think about Starlink version 2.0 and what it'll bring to SpaceX's satellite internet? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to check back for more out-of-this-world space commentary every week.